الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى أهلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى أهلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome back to our program Rise and Shine. Inshallah today we will start the show like usual. First we will hear a blessing of Sani Salawat upon the final Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, Undoubtedly, Allah Azza wa Jal has appointed an angel to my grave who has been granted the ability to hear the voice of every creature. Hence, whosoever recites Salat upon me until the day of judgment, he, i.e. the angel, presents to me that person's name along with his father's name and says, so and so has recited Salat upon me, subhanallah. Look at what a blessing of sending Salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu not just our name, but our father's name is presented in the court of the magnificent court of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And this here is just the ability of just a servant, an angel, just a servant at the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is just the ability of this servant. I imagine what will be the ability, the hearing faculty of the best of creation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why won't he be aware of our drushi? Why won't he be aware of our situations? Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we are struggling in life. Recite salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, by the blessing of Sayyidina Darud, our problems will be resolved. Inshallah, now we'll swiftly move on to the best segment of the show, the best segment on Madhini channel. Inshallah, we're going to go on to the Talawat of the Quran. Inshallah, today we will be starting a new chapter of the uh, Quran. Inshallah, today we're going to go through Surah Qaf, which is the 50th chapter of the Holy Quran. So Inshallah, we'll go on to uh, that segment now. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi وعليه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم मैं अल्लाह ताला की पनाह में आता हूं शैतान मर्दूद से بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله के नाम से शुरू जो نہایت مہربان رحم والا قاف والقرآن المجيد عزت والے قرآن کی قسم بل عجیب انذر منہم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجیب بلکہ انہیں اس کا اچمبا یعنی تعجب ہوا کہ ان کے پاس انہی میں کا ایک ڈر سنانے والا تشریف لایا تو کافر بولے یہ تو عجیب بات ہے اِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ کیا جب ہم مر جائیں اور مٹی ہو جائیں گے پھر جیئیں گے یہ پلٹنا دور ہے قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ ہم جانتے ہیں جو کچھ زمین ان میں سے گھٹاتی ہے وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ اور ہمارے پاس ایک یاد رکھنے والی کتاب ہے بلکہ انہوں نے حق کو جھٹلایا جب وہ ان کے پاس آیا تو وہ ایک مسترب بے سبات بات میں ہیں أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرْقِ 
फुरूज तो क्या उन्होंने अपने ऊपर आसमान को न देखा हमने उसे कैसा बनाया और संवारा और उसमें कहीं रखना नहीं और जमीन को हमने फैलाया और उसमें लंगर डाले यानी पहाड़ रखे और उसमें हर बार रौनक जोड़ा उगाया तब मुनीब सूझ और समझ हर रुजू वाले बंदे के लिए और हमने आसमान से बरकत वाला पानी उतारा तो उससे बाग उगाए और अनाज के काटा जाता है और खजूर के लंबे दरख्त जिनका पका हुआ ताजा फल बंदों की रोजी के लिए और हमने उससे मुर्दा यानी वीरान शहर जिलाया यानी सर सब्ज किया यू ही कब्रों से तुम्हारा निकलना है उनसे पहले झुटलाया नू की कौम और रस वालों और समूद और आद और फिर और लूत के हम कौमों और बन वालों और तुब्बा की कौम ने उनमें हर एक ने रसूलों को झुटलाया तो मेरे अजाब का वादा साबित हो गया محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. That was the tilawat of the first fourteen verses of Surah Qaf. Inshallah, I was first like to mention to you a bit of the introduction regarding uh, Surah Qaf. Surah Qaf is a surah which is was revealed in Makkah to Makarama. It consists of three rukus and forty-five verses. And uh, Kaf, what was the why was the reason this surah was named as Surah Kaf? Is because the first ayah of this holy Quran, this verse, this chapter, starts with the letter Kaf, and Kaf is from those letters which are known as Rufi Mukattaat, and uh, it is said only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the Messenger Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam know best. What these rufi mukattaat mean like kaf, yasin, taha, alif, lam, mim, words like this only Allah and His Prophet sallallahu taala listen know best. And a few hadith regarding this surah, he said that Sayyidina Umar radhiyallahu taala once asked a companion of the Prophet sallallahu taala listen that which Surahs did the Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam he used to read in the Eid namaz, and this companion he said that the Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi used to read Qaf wal Quran al Majid iqtarabat al Saat wa an Shak al Qamar, and in another uh, hadith it is said that narrated by Hazrat Umm Hasham bint Haritha radhiyallahu taala anha. She said the Qaf wal Quran al Majid. The Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam used to always she used to hear it from the blessed tongue of the Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam. And due to this, she memorized this verse. And this, the summary of this surah and the main what is the uh, what is this what lessons is taught in this surah. This surah. It mainly covers regarding resurrection after death. This surah covers 
coming getting resurrected after death and it provides some proof and evidence regarding this and this is one of the key creed beliefs of Muslim that we have to believe in resurrection after death and someone who rejects this resurrection after death death then he has not he has come out the folds of Islam so this is the creed belief of a Muslim that we need to believe regarding resurrection after death inshallah now we will move on to the next segment of the show which is the kalam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam allahu ghafur allahu ghafur allahu rahim allahu rahim allahu yuhibbul muhsinin wa khaliquna huwa raziquna wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer inna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadeer ya rabbal alamin allahu allah salli ala taha alamin allahu allah في كل وقت وحين الله 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 حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 املا قلبي باليقين الله الله ثبتني على هذا الدين الله الله واغفر لي والمسلمين الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 وطن غا كون هي الله الله بادشاه وو كون هي الله الله مهربان وو كون هي الله الله شان ہے اللہ اللہ سب دلوں کی جان ہے اللہ اللہ اس کی اپنی شان ہے اللہ اللہ حسب ربی جل اللہ 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 ما في قلبي غير الله اللہ اللہ نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 راز دل کے جانے وہ الله الله حال دی پہچانے وہ الله الله پھر بھی توبہ مانے وہ الله الله आसियों की आस है अल्लाह अल्लाह उसकी रहमत खास है अल्लाह अल्लाह सब दिलों के पास है अल्लाह अल्लाह हसबि रब्बि जल्ल अल्लाह 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 मा फी कल्बि गैर अल्लाह 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا اله الا الله 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 او الله دي المايتي الله الله protect me and guide me الله الله through your love and mercy الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور 
محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 Who is the all capable? Allah, Allah, Allah. The curer and the healer. Allah, Allah, Allah. Who is the dominant all over? Allah, Allah, Allah. Hasbi Rabbi Jalla Allah. Allah, Allah. Ma fi qalbi ghayr Allah. Allah, Allah. محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 أدار جناها الله الله عالم بادشاها الله الله يركلر بناها الله الله حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 إشد الله دردمي بوهل راما رحمي له باش له جنه لراما حير عليه هم أكشم هم سبح لراما حسب ربي جل الله 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 ما في قلبي غير الله 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 نور محمد صلى الله 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 لا إله إلا الله 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 رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وہ دونوں مشرقوں کا رب ہے اور دونوں مغربوں کا رب ہے تو تم دونوں اپنے رب کی کون کون سی نعمتوں کو جھٹلاؤ گے لارڈ آف دا ٹو ایسٹ اینڈ دا ٹو ویسٹ سو وچ آف یور لارڈس فیورز ول یو ڈینائی صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم دعوز دی کلام و ددائی ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از ریگارڈنگ having your complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, I would like to mention two verses of the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just explains uh, uh, having trust in Him. The first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whoever relies on Allah, so Allah is sufficient for him. ان اللہ يحب المتوکلین Indeed, Allah loves those who trust in Him. Two verses of the Holy Quran which discuss regarding having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone trusts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust for Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for Him. Whoever needs He has, if He puts His full trust, within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will be sufficient for Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the individual, the people who have, who trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something which we see common nowadays, that people, they, they are despair. Something happens or they, their du'as may not be accepted or they don't see the fruits, they won't see the fruits or the results of their du'as. And then they just despair, they just start questioning the Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah, why does this happen to me all the time? Why is this happening to me again? Remember, this is a test. If your du'as, if you cannot see the results of your du'as, know this. You might, you might not see the results in this world, but that du'a will be pending for you, waiting for you in the akhirah. Inshallah, you'll see the results of that du'a in the akhirah, in the afterlife. So this does not mean that you stop making du'a. You continue, you still make dua in the court of Allah. And inshallah, you'll gain the benefits. And that is something which will benefit us more. Why? But that's something which is eternal, forever. 
in this world you might get the dua but this, we're gonna, this world's gonna finish but if you want actual fruits and you want the results of a prayer of a dua we want that in the afterlife in the akhirah and it is related that there was once a pious person who he worshipped a lot and he used to be in Masjid al-Haram Makkah al-Mukarramah he would worship the whole night and he would observe fast during the day every evening a man bought him two loaves of bread and he used to use these two loaves of bread to do iftar to break his fast and then he would get busy and continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the next day again one day a thought crossed his mind that how is this trust in Allah that I am relying on the bread given to me by a human and did not trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the provider of sustenance to all creation that evening when the man bought the loaves of bread the worshipper returned them he goes I refuse them I don't want the bread three days passed when his hunger intensified he pleaded with Allah, the Ya Allah, I need food, I'm hungry. That night he had a dream in which he saw that he was present in the divine court of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who asked him, why did you return what I sent to you through my bondsman? The worshipfully humbly replied, a thought came to me that I have relied on a man instead of relying on you. Allah just said, who kept on sending you the loaves of bread? Who do you think sent that loaves of bread? The worshipper humbly replied, Ya Allah, only you are the provider. Then the worshipper was ordered, now do not return when I send you. In the same dream, he also saw the man who used to bring the bread, who was also present in the divine court and was asked, why did you stop giving the loaves of bread to this worshipper? He humbly replied, Ya Allah, you know it well. You know the reason why. Then Allah subhanahu asked him, O oh bondsman, to whom did you give those loaves of bread? The bondman whom he replied, I would give you. He was then ordered, you carry on with your deed. Paradise is your reward in return for this deed. Allahu Akbar. That this person, from this, we come to know a few things. That not only giving sadqa, it pleases Allah, but it leads a person to paradise. And it is also from this incident we've understood that the, the righteous and pious bondsmen of Allah attain the high status of placing absolute trust in Him. The worshipper used to worship the whole night and observe fast during the day. And he used to spend the day and night in worship. And he had a firm belief that the one who is he has worship, he was worshipping would provide sustenance to his bondsmen. He was busy worshipping Allah, so Allah, the one who provides resources, created a means for his sustenance. And the same happened. Every day a person would come in the evening and would give him two loaves of bread with, with which he would break his fast and then he would get ready to worship again. And from this we also understand that placing complete trust in the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a habit of the bondsmen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn that when a person he observes a fast of Ramadan, what happens that we people we lose the purpose of Ramadan. The purpose of Ramadan is to uplift us spiritually. To that is the month where a person is supposed to get closer to his Lord, get closer to his religion. What happens is that when people we fast in the summer, the UK fast were for around 20 to 21 hours so someone keeps our fast now he will be fasting for around 21 hours and what happens is that we fast for so long and we being a calorie deficit we've been a calorie deficit but when it's a time we start we eat so much that we eat more than the calories that we're supposed to intake in a day we have our samosas, we have our kebabs, we have our rice. Our eyes are not satisfied. We want more, we want more. 
he'll see on a on the table there'll be so much food and at the end only little about a little amount of food will be eaten this is not the month of eating this is not the month of just going all out at the time of iftar this is the month of spirituality and when we eat especially when you eat fast food this harms us spiritually due to the oils used due to the chemicals in these foods it harms us spiritually it will not uplift us in spirituality and we learn from this story that this worshiper who worshiped Allah so all day all night he would observe fast every day but he would only depend on two loaves of bread two loaves of bread will allow this person to run his daily activities and we should apply this in our lives as well that when is the month of ramadan or even voluntarily fast we should not go all out in eating what happens in the month of ramadan when you eat so much at the time of iftar when it comes to tarawi which is like around two hours later one and a half hours later we feel lazy we feel tired we cannot eat tarawi because we got full stomach we're bloated we got full stomach and we do not cannot concentrate and worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why we should eat at least we should not eat a lot at the time of iftar but at the time of sahri that's when we can eat food so we can get energy for the rest of the day and we should make a habit of being content with what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us today there are a large number of muslims who are found suffering from the shortage of sustenance and blessing in their wealth such people should make dua for the increase and blessing in their sustenance along with the wealth of contentment because contentment makes a person who is blessed with it carefree of the world or whatever it has and how we content being content protects a person from asking or begging others and teaches him to place absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala contentment creates self-determination a sense of honor in a person whereas the being desires enslaves a person whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you be content be happy uh, this is something contentment is something even the people who have a lot of money Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed with you a lot of wealth yeah people still are not content with that they want more as human beings we want more we don't be content and the definition of contentment it is mentioned that alama abdul mustafa azmi rahmatullahi ta'ala said that when a person being content with whatever he receives from Allah lives his life on refrains from greed is that is called contentment The habit of contentment is a great blessing of Allah for humans. A contented person is blessed with the wealth of peace whereas a greedy person always feels worried. This is the definition of contentment. That what Allah whatever Allah subhanahu wa given me and you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah we are content if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given you a lot of money. He just given you the right amount of money so you can survive be alhamdulillah i know it is said that a person who is got has been given more wealth he'll be his question the day of judgment will be more severe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask him questions regarding that that i gave you so much wealth how did you spend that wealth how did he spend the sustenance which i gave you did he spend in a halal way did he spend in a haram way and how did he earn that did he earn in a halal or a haram way So be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and you. Just know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a shelter. That's something that we should show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about. They should be content with that. You don't need a, don't need a flashy car, you don't need the massive mansions. Just to survive in this world, that is enough for us. Just having the ability to survive in this dunya that is enough that is contentment 
do shukr, show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And contentment is, I say, one of the best attributes a human being can have. He, by being content, a person can overcome his desires. Whereas a person who is not content, he's discontented, he'll end up being a slave of his nafs. And a contented person is he's privileged to express thanks. Whereas a person who is not contentment, he is always remains unfilled, even if one desire of his is not fulfilled. He will not remain happy even if one of his desires are not fulfilled. And contentment is a sign of humans outstanding courage. Great thought, piety, greatness and patience. Whereas following desires, obedience to nafs, greed, being stingy and hypocrisy distance him from Allah, the divine path. The importance of contentment can be best judged by the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only bestows this good habit upon his pious and chosen bondsmen. The sacred lives of the blessed Anbiya alayhim salam blessed companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and the pious saints rahimahumullahu ta'ala the best role models for us to get the actual advice of how to be content. And you can see that when you read the lives of these pious predecessors, the Sahaba Quran, Radiallahu Anhum, the Prophet, they were content with whatever, whatever Allah subhanahu gave them. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa gave them, they were content. Like they knew the new uh, the Sahabas, the companions, the early companions what they went through the difficulties when they accepted Islam, like 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 the individuals like like the likes of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala the amount of difficulties he, he went through due to him accepting Islam but he was still content he was still showing gratitude and he was still reciting La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam why? because he was content he had his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knew you can say a person like that they know but I am I may be finding some difficulties, but I have my trust in Allah. There is a better path for me after this. There will be a better thing for me after this difficulty. And in Allah ma'asabirin, indeed Allah is with the patient one. When you have when you're going through some difficulties, be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed Allah subhanahu wa is with you. In Allah ma'asabirin, indeed Allah is with the ones who are patient. And notice that if a difficulty comes to a person or he's struggling, that may be something which may be the means of him getting something better. Allah subhanahu wa may be testing me and you to see if my bondsman has complete trust in me, to see if my bondsman will still worship me, if, to see if my bondsman will still Read namaz, we're still going to search that in my court. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see who will succeed in that test. And when you read the blessed seerah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala that his blessed seerah is full of contentment. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never desired for any worldly rest or luxury, comfort, nor did he sallallahu alayhi wa ever try to gain them. He Allah, used to get great treasures consisting of the uh, spoils of wars, but he would distribute all of them to Muslims. That the blessed family of the Prophet the house of the Prophet وسلم, never ate food which would make them completely full for three days till the Prophet وسلم, departed from this life, from this world. And this as a Muslim, as an individual, we should take lessons that even though the Prophet Sallallahu he is the chief of both worlds, he Sallallahu would rest or sleep on a mat. He Sallallahu he would use a leather pillow filled with bark of date tree for keeping his blessed head on. He Sallallahu would never 
desire to eat delicious and lavish food, even he still never ate chapati. He still often used to use the thick loaves of barley bread. Allahu Akbar. This is mine, your Prophet. This is the best of all creation. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at him. If the Prophet Sallallahu wanted, he could have lived, he could have had the whole world in his hand, whatever luxuries he wanted, but no. The Prophet was content with whatever Allah Subhanahu gave him. He was content. He had his full trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is a lesson for me and you. Now look at the Prophet Sallallahu that being the best of creation, he was still content. Yeah, Allah Subhanahu gave us so much things. Allah Subhanahu gave us a car. I came in the morning, sat in my car, drove down to the studio. Took me around 20 minutes. That's something you should be content with. Regardless of what car you have, that you should be content with. You wake up in the morning, you have a shelter above your head. Shukr. Thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala provides you sustenance, He provides you with food and rizq. Whatever you eat at home, thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Sadr al Fadi Lama Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Murad Abadi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala stated that until the apparent demise of the blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the blessed family never ate, uh, ate bread made from barley for two consecutive days. It is also stated in a hadith that the whole month would pass, but the stove would remain unlit for cooking food in the blessed sacred house. The blessed household would merely survive on water on a few days. The second caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu ta'ala narrated that if I had wanted, I would have eaten better food than you and wore better clothes than you. But I want to save my luxury and comforts for my hereafter. Allahu Akbar. That Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala is telling us that whatever you have, be content. You may not have the luxuries of this world, but save those luxuries for the hereafter. Those luxuries which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran Ghani paradise, where you be made sat on thrones made out of pearls, facing each other, having servants giving you jugs of wine. And the wine of paradise is not the wine of this world, the wine of paradise is pure. It doesn't intoxicate a person. There'll be rivers of milk flowing where you can drink from. You see something, a bird flying in the sky, you want to eat that. Just the, with the mere imagination, mere imagination, that animal will come to you cooked. These are the luxuries of the hereafter. And it is said in paradise, there will be no jealousy, there will be no guilt. Everyone will be happy in paradise. That's how a person will be in paradise. So imagine you're content with Allah, you're happy with whatever He has given you. And now you're just waiting for the result of this contentment in the hereafter. On the day of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us regarding what He has given us. If we, if we don't have a lot, then the question will not be easy, it will be easy for us. But if we have a lot, then the questions will be difficult, the amount of answers we'll have to give. So make dua Allah subhanahu makes it easy for us on Yawm al And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he is the owner of the treasure of both worlds, his life was full of contentment. <laughs> and therefore we should also follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and obey him and become contented people. And inshallah, after a slight break, we'll go to the next segment, inshallah after that, we'll come back and we'll continue with this topic and we'll go through regarding some advantages and of being content and some disadvantage of uh, obeying your desires and following your desires. So inshallah now, We'll move on to a reminder. Sallu ala la habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam.
By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. You know, each person out there has uh, the, the favorite things. Some have different, we can say, preferences. Some have different favorites depending on what item it is or what, uh, what thing it is. Have I ever thought what is favorite to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal? Subhanallah. Our Khalik, our Creator, our Sustainer, the one to whom I'm going to return. A person passes away, what do we say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. That indeed to Allah we belong and indeed to Him is our return. I'm going to return to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. However I live my life in this in this dunya, this short life, whether it's obeying him and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or disobeying them, I'm still going to return to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. I'm still going to be answerable for my actions and what I speak in this world. I'm going to be accountable for everything. Subhanallah. Listen to this beautiful narration or these two narrations that the most favorite act to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal is to offer salah in its stipulated time and to perform good deeds, virtuous deeds with parents. Subhanallah. If your parents are still alive, you are most fortunate. Serve them. Listen to them. Obey them. Obey them so long as they do not instruct you to do something against the Sharia, against the Islamic sacred law. Please them. They make dua for you, Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. And you'll be following this command. You'll be following this blessed hadith and this is one of the favorite acts to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Another hadith, the most favorite act to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, after the fara'id, after the essential actions, is to enter happiness into the heart of an Islamic brother. Subhanallah. When last have I made fellow Muslims happy? Start with your family. Charity begins at home. We hear this all the time. Start with your family members. Enter some happiness into their hearts. So uh, we don't mean buy them a car or buy them a, 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 the latest mobile phone or something. No, I mean just to smile at them. Just to, you know, be concerned about them. Ask them how they're doing. Phone them if they're far away from you. Make them happy. For the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Inshallah Ta'ala, this will help us. This reward will be of benefit for us by doing so. Inshallah on the day of judgment in the grave as well. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala. That was the uh, daily reminder we have this, uh, this segment every day on this program. So now we'll go through some advantages of contentment and how, what is the consequence of someone who follows his desires. Contentment eradicates the love of this world from the heart, whereas the one who satisfies his desires, he'll keep on falling in love with this world and a time will come when he considers this world to be everything. He will forget his actual purpose in this world. And this is something which is a deadly poison for a person's deen. A contented person places absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than resources. In this way, he protects himself from the dependence on others. On the other hand, the discontented person keeps his eyes on the resources and considers them to be everything. In the same way, he has hopes and great expectations from people. Contentment protects a person from acting according to the desires and by virtue of his blessings, he lives his life with peace and satisfaction. Whereas acting according to the desires brings about restlessness and stress. So a person always in stress life. Where am I going to get my money from? I need this car, I need this money, I need this, I need this, I need this. A person will never be happy. You want more. A contentment eradicates bad habits like greed and stinginess. 
It is highly effective in developing the passion for being pleased with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for spending in the path of Allah. On the other hand, a discontented person may fall into bad habits like greed and stinginess. Further, such a person starts objecting to the bestowal of Allah if his desire does not get fulfilled. Start questioning the qudrat of Allah that, Ya Allah, why are you not giving me this? Why are you not giving me that? Always in the end of questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the biggest advantage of contentment is that due to it one attains the pleasure of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, good news is for the person who is guided with Islam and gets sustenance as per his need and is content with it. Allah Akbar. This is a hadith in Sunnah Tirmidhi. The person, good news for the person who is contentment with whatever Allah, the sustenance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given him. Allah, this is something which we should be happy about that we are content with whatever Allah SWT has given us that will make Allah and the Messenger happy that brings the pleasure of Allah and His beloved Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and as being content and absolute trust these are a link they have to trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and they have a great link between each other. As contentment, as you can say, is, is like the staircase to having absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So contentment, it persuades a person to place absolute trust in Allah and depending on less wealth, his trust, absolute trust in Allah is one of the very important duties out of the wajib and obligatory acts of faith. So you can say that a person, if he wants to have trust in Allah, he wants to put absolute tawakkal in Allah, first he has to be content. This staircase of contentment, he will climb the ladder of contentment, which then at the end, he will get to the top level. He will reach the heights of having absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Hazri Imam Ahlul Sunnah, Mawlana Shah Imam Ahmad, Radha Khan rahmatullah has said that it is the firm obligatory act to place absolute trust in Allah. So after the fard acts like read namaz, all these acts of worship, another thing which is necessary for us, wajib for us is to have absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person, the individual who does not, he does not have the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that person, his faith is not complete and his heart is still full of darkness. And having absolute trust in Allah is the soul of faith. That if a person has trust in Allah, his faith is firm. And this is an act which brings a person closer to his Lord brings him close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gets him away from people. And it gives a person strength to fight steadfastly against difficulties and problems. And absolute trust in Allah in troubles raises the hopes of a person. That if you have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in the times of troubles, even where you are the most down, as you can say, sometimes in life, we feel very down. We be up here, we just, something happens, we just plummet down. Even in that scenario, if a person puts his complete trust in Allah, that will give him hope. And it is mentioned, Sarat al Jinan, Mufti Sabi mentions that Imam Fakhruddin Razi said that Tawakkal does not mean that a person gives up himself and his efforts after considering them useless and rubbish. As some ignorant people say, but rather tawakkal means that a person uses apparent resources, but he does not trust them in the heart, but rather trusts in Allah's help, aid and his support. Sina Anas radiallahu anha said, a person humbly asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa should I trust in Allah after feathering my camel or leaving it on feathered? 
It is replied, you tie it and then trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this means that we still have to make our means when we do summa. That we still have to find the resources. For example, like if a person, as you can say, having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having sustenance, getting sustenance, we still have to make our own means as well. We have to go out and search for a job, we go out and search for something and still have the tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah Allah will provide you with sustenance. And tawakkul is that one should use resources in any work by considering it to be the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that he should leave it in the hands its result in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So someone goes out, he tries his best to get sustenance, he tries his best to find sustenance and yet he leaves that, he has a complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. he leaves the result in the hands of Allah, that Allah will provide him. Inshallah, if he had complete trust in that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide that individual. And Allah Hazrat, he mentioned that tawakkul does not mean giving up resources, but rather it means giving up trusting in resources. That if someone has tawakkul, you should, that does not mean that you give up in search for a thing. It does not mean that you give up searching for a matter, for a job or a gaining risk. It means that you go out, you search, but you leave it in the hands of Allah. You put, have your trust in Allah, Allah will help you. And like we mentioned in the first story of that man who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he left his full contentment, he was trust in Allah. And what did that lead to? What did that lead that person to? It led him that to still get food, he left it in the hands of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a means through another person who used to give deliver two loaves of bread to him. And it has been narrated that a very pious person who sat in the foot of a mountain after getting himself away from people, he started saying that, I will not ask anyone for anything until Allah gives me my sustenance. But one week passed, a sustenance did not come to him. When he's about to die, he humbly requests to Allah, oh my Lord, you have created me. Therefore bestow the sustenance on me which you have written in my destiny, otherwise seize my soul. A voice was heard from the unseen, by my respect and glory, I will not give you sustenance until you go to the inhabited places and sit amongst the people. The pious man went to the inhabited places and sat. Some came to him with food and some with water. He ate and drank water well, but felt a doubt. Then a voice came, was heard from the unseen. Do you want to change my way through your worldly piety? Don't you know, instead of giving people sustenance directly, I like to send sustenance to people through people. From here it has become obvious that it is necessary to find resources to earn sustenance. If a person does not find or use any resources which he has, and remains in just claiming to have absolute trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is not absolute trust in Allah. Similarly, considering your own plan to be everything or depending only on resources, that is not all, that is not absolute trust as well in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the real trust? The real trust in Allah is that one should find resources, make efforts and make a plan, but then he should not trust in these resources, but rather trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is the divine rune of Allah that he as well makes everything done through certain means. Hunger is satisfied when a person eats food. It cannot be satisfied unless a person eats food. Rain only falls when the clouds are in the sky. It does not rain without the clouds. So we need to make our means, we need to make our ways, and then put our complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, now we'll quickly move on to the next segment of the show, which is the daily hadith. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala. على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعليه
وسلم contributing towards the construction of the house of Allah, the masjid, or to ornament and beautify and embellish the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or to benefit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way, is a great act worthy of reward. And if we look at our pious predecessors, rahimahumullah ta'ala, they did such acts, subhanallah. In one narration, we're told that Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu ta'ala, passed by the masajid in the month of Ramadan Kareem. This narration is in Kanzul Ummal. And he saw that oil lamps were lit in those masajid. And obviously this benefits the believers, this benefits the participants, the attendees of the masjid. So when he saw this and he looked at this, he made the following dua. May Allah Almighty illuminate the grave of Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu an, just as he illuminated the masajid, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So partake in constructing masajid, beautifying masajid, embellishing masajid, benefiting the believers who come to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inshallah your grave will also be illuminated. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib. صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم. Now inshallah we'll uh, go through uh, the next segment which is the uh, cartoon. And inshallah when we come back then inshallah we'll try to close and wrap up today's uh, show. Sallu ala al Habib صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. كنيز فاطمة good girl كنيز فاطمة اللهم إني أسألك خير المولج وخير المخرج. رايكا، what was that? I just shut the door. What else? With such force? Um, um, actually, the door slipped from my hand in a rush. This kind of rush can also break the door. Make sure that you don't try anything in a rush, whether it is a door or a cupboard, or a drawer or a cabinet. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'll be careful in future. Kaniza Fatima, good girl. Kaniza Fatima, everyone loves her. Mm. She mm. is truthful. Mm. She says the wrong <laughs> and does the right. <laughs> Raika! What are you doing? Just drinking water. Standing up? What's wrong in it? We should drink water sitting down. But why? Because it's sunnah to drink water sitting down. Okay. And also, Raika, whenever you drink water, you should do so by reciting Bismillah, looking in light, and in three sips. Why in the light? You can drink water in the dark as well. If you drink water in dark, and if there's any dust or dirt inside the glass, then that will also go down your belly, which can also make you ill. Bismillah rahman rahim And look at the state of your room, it's all messed up. Your school bag's on the floor, and your shoes are not put away either. And you haven't even changed your uniform yet. Uh, actually I was hungry, and forgot about it in a rush. I'll tidy up everything in two minutes. Ouch! Raika, be careful! Oh, it hurts really bad. You see, Raika, you got hurt by not cleaning your room and rushing through everything without any need. You need to learn from all this. Hmm, inshallah, next time I'll be careful. Come on, it's time for Zohar Salah now. We should go and get ready to offer Zohar Salah. Sure, let's go. Hmm? Honestly, Raika, I don't know why this girl's always in a rush. Raika, what's wrong with you? You do everything in so much rush that you don't even know what's going around you. First, you shut the door in a rush. And then in a rush to eat, you started eating without cleaning or tidying up your room. Then again in a rush, you started drinking water standing up. And now you didn't shut the tap properly. And now look at this. 
Look, Rika, things don't happen properly when we rush through, and we can make many mistakes if we rush without any need. The Holy Prophet ﷺ has stated, Rushing through is from Satan. We should make sure that we do everything with peace and calmness. Sayyidina Hassan Basri Rahmatullah states that, A believer is he who performs his tasks with reflection, calmness and seriousness. Sure, sister. I'll not rush into things in future. Inshallah. Come on, let's offer salah now. And make sure you offer it with peace and calmness. The summary of the saying of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is that Salah is with calmness. Jazakillahu khaira. I'll be careful of these things in future. Kaniz Fatima. Good girl. Kaniz Good girl. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah. In this segment of the part of the show, we usually go through some sunnah and manners. Inshallah, in today's segment, we will go through some uh, sunnah and manners regarding sneezing. So, inshallah, in today's uh, this part of the show, we will go through regarding what you should say when you sneeze. So, the two blessed sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He likes the sneeze and does not like the yawn. Number two, when one sneezes and says Alhamdulillah, the angels say Rabbul Alameen. And if this person says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the angels will say, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you. When you sneeze, so manners, you should lower your head, cover your face as you sneeze, and sneeze in a low voice, as sneezing too loud is not a good etiquette. So one way you could sneeze when you sneeze put your hand down like this and sneeze so the splashes of your sneeze don't go everywhere when the one should say alhamdulillah after sneezing and it is better to say alhamdulillah rabbil alameen alhamdulillah ala kulli hal and for the person who hears so if a person says about sneezing, I say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And if a person hears him say or her say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen or Alhamdulillah, then it is wajib and necessary for that person to say Yarhamuk Allah. May Allah subhanahu have mercy upon you immediately. And it should be said in such a volume, such a voice that the person who sneezed and said Alhamdulillah, could, that person could hear this reply. And then Look at this beautiful religion that you're making du'as upon du'a. And then when the person who sneezes hears this du'a, يَرْحَمُكَ Allah, He should reply and say, يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ SubhanAllah. Look at this religion that you sneeze, Alhamdulillah. All praises for Allah. A person will then reply to me and give me du'a. يَرْحَمُكَ Allah, may Allah mercy you. Then I'll give him du'a back. يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ Then may Allah first of all, SubhanAllah, forgive me and you. What a beautiful blessing of sneezing that you're just making du'as to each other. And it said that verses Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal after sneezing and passes his tongue over all his teeth, he will be saved from dental diseases. Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu ta'ala wajahul kareem has said, whoever says Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal upon sneezing, you will never suffer from pain in the molars. The one sneezing should utter Alhamdulillah audibly so that it can be heard and answered. They reply, Ya Rahmukallah, it is wajib on the first sneeze. If the one sneezing says Alhamdulillah on the second sneeze as well, it is not wajib to reply, rather it is mustaf. So for example, if a person sneezes, says Alhamdulillah, then you reply, Ya Rahmukallah, is wajib upon him. Then he sneezes again and again, then it is not wajib. The reply is wajib only when the one sneezing says Alhamdulillah. If he does not say Alhamdulillah, then there's no reply. If one sneezes during a Friday sermon or any khutbah, the one hearing should not reply to this because when it's a khutbah, when the sermon is going, everyone should remain silent. If there are many Islamic brothers in a gathering, you're in a group, if you're in a gathering and someone sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, then it's sufficient if, if, that, if only one person replies, then that is sufficient. Not everyone needs to reply and say, Yarhamukallah. If one sneezes on the side of the wall and says Alhamdulillah, the one hearing, then the one hearing should uh, should reply. So if I'm in a room and someone outside hears me say Alhamdulillah when I sneeze, then he needs to reply to me. 
you, if whilst you're off his last one sneeze and you recite Alhamdulillah with the intention of replying to his sneeze, your, sin, your salah will become invalid. So these are some pearls regarding, uh, some uh, sunnah and manas regarding uh, sneezing. The main thing is that when you sneeze, Alhamdulillah, reply, Ya Rahmukallah, then you should reply and say, Ya Kfirullah Alaikum. What a beautiful message and teaching we have in this religion that we should always make dua for each other. So one thing you should take from this pro, uh, ep, uh, show today is that practice these sunnahs and manas and inshallah you'll gain benefits from them inshallah now we'll go on to our last segment and then after that we will hopefully conclude today's show the last segment is a promo sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam my dear islamic viewers wealth is a blessing from allah allah has given us this wealth whilst we're in this dunya and we make a decision of where we spend that wealth. But on the day of judgment, we will also be questioned about where we spent that wealth. We have a free will to make a decision and spend it in any way we wish. But on the day of judgment, you will be asked, where did you spend that wealth? Because this wealth was given to you from Allah Azza wa You may be working many, many hours. You may have a degree. You may have studied. And you now are saying that I, because of my hard work, because of my education, I've got this wealth, but Allah give you that wealth. Allah give you them opportunities. Allah give you that strength. And on the day of judgment, you'll be questioned. So spending in the way of Allah Azza is very, a very important part of the theme of Islam. And spending in the way of Allah protects our Iman. Spending in the way of Allah locks up 70 doors of evil. Spending in the way of Allah can give us a shade for us on the day of judgment. So I'd like to encourage all of our viewers to get one of these money boxes of Dal Islami. Put them in your house and every day just put something in it. There is a saying of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi that putting money, giving spending in the way of Allah in the morning repels evil as well. So let's have one of these boxes in our houses, put something in there, even if it's a penny a day, 10 pence a day, you lose change a day. People nowadays, you're walking around with loose change and they don't know what to do with it. Put it in this box. Put it in this box and spend it in the way of Allah. And this box, yes, the brothers of Dal Islami will open this box, but the reward of this box will be open for you on the day of judgment. So I encourage all of our viewers to please get one of these body boxes in their home. There should be a number at the bottom of the screen. There might be an email address as well at the bottom of the screen. But I encourage all of our viewers to have one of these. Inshallah, the team of brothers will collect them from you every single month. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of the love of the Prophet, it's all over the world. Sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now we come to the end of the program. Uh, today's, what we could take from today's program is regarding how we complete contentment and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we will come back tomorrow with a new topic, a new program, a new day. So from today's program, please be content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me and you. And always do shukr and show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings we have inshallah till next time sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam by the grace of Allah by the grace of Allah even the darkest night will end and the sun 